Hey there, it's Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware here with something else super from the good folks at NVIDIA. Earlier this month, we showed you the GeForce RTX 2060 Super and the GeForce RTX 2070 Super. Well, wouldn't you know, here we have a GeForce RTX 2080 Super, which is now go for launch. We're gonna unbox it, tell you what it's all about, and take you on a quick nickel tour next. And so the GeForce RTX 2080 Super up close here and the unboxing begins. I have already slit the tape on either side of the box. And uh, there you have it. Inside its protective static bag, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Super. Let's unbag it. They don't make it easy. I don't know why. All right, so there you go. Oh, wait, wait for it, wait for it. Gotta peel back the mirror finish protective cover. There you go. The GeForce RTX 2080 Super by NVIDIA. Looks a whole heck of a lot like an RTX 2070 Super. But let's take a walk around this GPU. So yes, taking a walk around the GeForce RTX 2080 Super, this is an identical mechanical design to a GeForce RTX 2070 Super, which is also an identical mechanical design to a GeForce RTX 2080 standard card. NVIDIA's Turing TU-104 GPU and PCB under the hood. Let's walk around it real quick. As you can see, the heatsink runs the entire length of the PCB underneath here dual axial fans and on top again you can see that heat sink broken up only by this six pin PCI Express power connector and an eight pin PCI Express power connector there back of the card pretty devoid of anything except a little Nvidia logo here's the IO plate and as you can see three display ports as well as an HDMI 2.0 port and that USB-C based virtual link port for Nvidia's implementation uh, for VR setups. There is the RTX 2080 Super logo on the backside. The card is entirely encased in aluminum shroud. And uh, yeah, identical setup to a GeForce RTX 2070 Super, but some significant differences in terms of speeds and feeds going on here. So let's talk about those. Now, but wait, before we do, let's take care of the miscellaneous. Here with the RTX 2080 Super, you also get this little kit of stuff, just like an RTX 2070 Super. You get a Dual-Link DVI to DisplayPort adapter with plastic plugs on each end, of course. So there you go. That is because you don't have a Dual-Link DVI port on the uh, back I.O. plate of the card, so if you need to adapt to that, you can. And of course, various literature pack, quick start guide, etc. So that is included here too now. Let's talk specs. So the GeForce RTX 2080 Super has two more streaming multiprocessors on board versus a standard RTX 2080. 48 total streaming multiprocessors on board an RTX 2080 Super. It also has 128 additional CUDA cores, 3072 to be exact, and increased base and GPU boost clocks, 1650 megahertz, base clock for the RTX 2080 Super, 1815 megahertz, 1.815 gigahertz on the GPU boost clock side of things for the RTX 2080 Super. It also has eight more texture units and a bit more L1 cache on board, the same eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. However, it is clocked at 15.5 gigabits per second for the memory data rate and so actual memory bandwidth is 496 gigabytes per second versus 448 gigabytes per second on a standard RTX 2080. What this amounts to is a 250 watt total board power for the card, the RTX 2080 Super versus 215 watts for a standard RTX 2080. But how does that measure up in terms of performance? Well, let's take a look at that real quick. First, let's look at Middle Earth Shadow of War. Monolith's surprisingly fun orc slaying title delivers a ton of visual fidelity, even at its lower quality settings. So to maximize the eye candy on high-end graphics cards, we used the game's ultra quality preset and ran the benchmark routine at a couple of resolutions, topping out at 4K. 
Here the GeForce RTX 2080 Super steps out of the gate with a 5 to nearly 9% lead over a standard GeForce RTX 2080 Founders Edition card with the higher resolution workload offering the biggest performance delta. However, the $699 MSRP GeForce RTX 2080 Super falls in about 15 to 20% behind an $1199 MSRP GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. Next we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the most recent installment of the third person perspective action adventure game starring heroine Lara Croft and equally impressive DX12 visuals. At 1440p and 4K, the performance gains for an RTX 2080 Super over a standard RTX 2080 equate to about 5 to 7%, though this might seem on the thin side would underscore that the RTX 2080 Super is intended to supersede its standard 2080 counterpart in Nvidia's product stack. So that's a 5 to 7% gain, essentially free. Well, with the same $699 MSRP anyways. Finally, let's fire up some real-time ray tracing infused benchmarking with 3 d Mark Port Royale. UL Benchmarks notes that 3 d Mark Port Royale was developed with input from AMD, Intel, Nvidia, Microsoft, and other leading-edge technology companies. Port Royale will run on any DirectX 12 graphics card with drivers that support DirectX ray tracing, but as of today, AMD does not support it in their driver. So here we have just GeForce RTX GPUs to show you. Looking at the scores and frame rates in RTX 2080, Super is about 6% faster than a standard RTX 2080 and easily leads the pack below Nvidia's beastly RTX 2080 Ti. From a pricing standpoint with the new Nvidia GeForce RTX Super lineup, we now have the RTX 2060 Super Founders Edition cards at MSRP of $399, the RTX 2070 Super at $499, and now the RTX 2080 Super at $699. In addition, qualifying purchases of any of these new RTX 20 series Super cards or a desktop PC powered by one of them will include copies of two ray tracing enabled games, specifically Control and Wolfenstein. Youngblood. But no matter how you slice it, make sure you swing by hothardware.com for our full review with tons more benchmark data across a number of game titles. And of course, hit thumbs up and subscribe if you like this quick take of Nvidia's new GeForce RTX 2080 Super for additional product reviews, event coverage, and our always fascinating Two and a Half Geeks webcast. I'm Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs>